Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia, aka Crafty Owl, here with a project for cat scrappiness. Today's card is going to be all about love. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I have been having so much fun using the new stencils from Cat Scrappiness and pairing them with older products that I already have in my stash. Today I will be using the Falling Heart stencil along with the Valentine Quokka stamp set and the double stitched heart dies to create a card about love. Now, if you don't necessarily need a card about love or you'd rather save that for around Valentine's Day, you can use the same ideas that I use today and just incorporate them into a different occasion card. As I go along with the process, I will let you know about other tools and products that I bring in. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I cut a piece of white cardstock to five and a half by four and a quarter, and I got out some black ink as well as the largest heart from the die set. I will be stamping the top two quokkas kind of centered to the top of this piece of cardstock, and I want to make sure that they'll mostly fit within that largest heart. So while I place those, I did put the die onto the card front. Now, when I go to stamp this first time, I do want to move the quokka to the right over more when I stamp it so they're right up against each other so it looks like they're kissing. So I pick up only one quokka with the Misty and then I'm going to ink it up and stamp it onto that cardstock twice just to make sure I get a nice solid black line. After I stamped the first quokka, I brought back in the heart die and I lined up the second one to the right, trying to get it as close as possible to the recipient of the kiss. And I ended up getting this very close, they're right next to each other, and once again I inked it up and stamped it twice. While I had my stamps and ink out, I went ahead and brought in some masking paper and I stamped both of the quokkas onto here. Now this impression doesn't have to be the greatest, I'll be taking it off screen to cut it out. Also while I was off screen, I die cut that largest heart from a piece of the masking paper and I kept the negative and the positive pieces. Now it's time to do some ink blending. I placed the negative mask of the heart around my quokkas. Luckily I could see through the masking paper and I got this pretty much centered right on the card front. Now because I want my quokkas to stay the same color as the background, I brought in those two masks and covered those stamps up as well. I will be doing all of the blending today using this red ink from my stash and the first round of the heart I went in and I blended from the outside to the inside making sure I reached the center. For the second layer of ink I concentrated my brush right along the outside edge of that heart just so it was a little bit darker when I go to remove the mask later. Once I had both layers of ink down, I then brought in the positive heart mask and I placed that in the opening before removing the negative. This way I know for sure that it goes exactly where it needs to be. Now you did notice there that I had to be very careful with my quokka tail on the right. I did not want to remove that because that will need to stay in place while I place my falling heart stencil. I wanted the stencil to have a good concentration of hearts so I placed my piece of cardstock toward the bottom. While I was ink blending it, I held it in place with a couple pieces of blue painter's tape and I went in and made sure my hearts were nice and saturated. I probably covered each of them with three layers of ink. 
Now my favorite part, the big reveal. I loved pulling back each of the layers to reveal a little bit more of the card front. Now in the end, this card has lots of color, but it didn't require any coloring. I especially like too how some of the stitching came through on the stenciled heart. Now you could leave it as is since there's already a lot of color, or you could do like I did and I brought in a light pink alcohol marker and I colored in the quokka's cheeks. Once I had a little bit of pink down, I brought in a colorless blender and just blended that out a little bit. Now this card needs a sentiment. So keeping with the single layer theme, I'm gonna be stamping the I Love You sentiment from the stamp set right on to the stamped and ink blended piece. I have room at the bottom of the heart that is perfect for the sentiment. I lined it up as best centered as I could, and after I picked it up with the door of my Misty, I made sure that the sentiment was straight across. Now once again, I did ink this up and stamp it twice using the same black ink as before, but you'll notice for this one, I am not using my pressure tool. Instead, I'm just applying a little pressure with my fingers. I have found that sometimes if I use the presser tool, on sentiment stamps that some of the letters turn out more squished or thicker than other letters in the sentiment. So I would rather stamp this lightly three times and have the sentiment look nice than have kind of a blobby misshapen sentiment. Off camera, I added this piece to a card base and I still wanted to add some kind of embellishments. So I brought in the Love is Love Sprinkles mix. Not only does this have some fun rainbow hearts and flags and white sprinkles, but it also has some multicolored hearts. So I chose a red, a pink, and a white heart and I put three around my quokkas using some art glitter glue. Once I had the dots of glue in place, I did let them get tacky for about five seconds before I placed the hearts onto each dot of glue with my jewel picker. And here's a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.